uh, just uh, prior to uh, Leroy's coming onto the scene. Dick Agresti in his fourth season doing an excellent job with this uh, TA group. Another legend uh, that uh, used to play, used to be, uh, and has been in this area, and, and just uh, a renowned name in football. Uh, of course, uh, Coach Cody that preceded him was, uh, his coach was Dick Agresti's coach in high school, George, and I'm sure you remember that. Sure I do. <laughs> I remember Bob Cody. Sure. There's all kinds of legends around this place. We got even Brad Leach. He calls himself a legend. <laughs> He's more than a legend. <laughs> He's the athletic director. <laughs> oh, Billy didn't have a short passing game. I think we're going to see that today. We've got uh, the deep man, Mike Babcock, to kick Hank Richards, number 31, a speedster. Does a lot of things well for this Deering High team. Short kick. Taken by number 34, Jeff Jarry at the 25, the 30, up over the 35-yard line, and Jarry taken down there at around the 36-yard line of Thornton Academy. So Jarry, with a good run back, gets Thornton Academy ready now for their first offensive series of the afternoon. And Matt Myatt for the Deering High Rams made a nice uh, solo tackle on the ball carrier. That Thornton starts in pretty good shape, pretty good field position. In the backfield, it's uh, Summer, the quarterback. Lavoy, the fullback. Behind him, the tailback, Doug Goulet. And Doug Goulet having a bit of a problem with his string, uh, chin strap. And uh, he makes that adjustment. Now we're all set. We'll tell you who the officials are momentarily. As a uh, straight handoff to the fullback, he pulls it back, and uh, around the left end goes Summers. Summers at the 45, the 50, the 40, the 30, the 20, and caught from behind by Hank Richards inside the 15-yard line. So in the first play from scrimmage, Summer goes all the way from his 37-yard line to the opposing 14-yard line. Make it the 13 as it's closer to the 13 for a big gain as he fooled everyone with a fake to the fullback, pulled it back, and just used the quarterback option to perfection. Looked like around uh, 47 yards. The thing that made that uh, play work was a tremendous fake that he put on the fullback. He sure did. He faked a lot of people out on that one. And the only one that didn't... Uh, get out run on that play was the speedster Hank Richards and he's one of the fastest uh, in the state and he saved six points at least for the time being so first play from scrimmage goes for 47 yards this one to Goulette Goulette right side he's into the four yard area as he breaks loose on the right side good blocking down to the three yard line and a nice run by junior Doug Goulette as he followed his blocking well, first and goal from the, uh, well, I set it at the three and a half yard line, George. Yeah, just about there. Uh, Greg Haskell for the Deering High Rams finally made the tackle, but a gaping hole there uh, by the inside people for Thorne Academy. Followed the blocking of John DeSepis and Glenn Arnold, and what a hole. This time it goes to Lavoie. Lavoie's in for the score. Three plays and a touchdown for Thorne Academy. And uh, it'll be Summers to hold. And uh, number 83. Or is it? Well, let's check his number. 85. Excuse me. Chris Nason. Is it Nason? Uh, 83. No, it's right. Todd Maurice. And the kick is no good. Left-footed kicker, and it's no good. So as they come back upfield, it's 6 nothing. As they come back upfield after that, uh, really a very quick drive, George, we've hardly got a chance to uh, sit down and uh, take our seats. And three plays later, the, uh, the uh, Golden Trojans are on the scoreboard. And uh, three good plays, and uh, then the final, that three-yard burst by Lance Lavoie, the fullback. Well, can you imagine going about 60 yards and only getting one first down? <laughs> well, that's because of that long run, obviously. Dick Agresti will take that anytime. Oh, sure. The kick by Lavoie, the left-footed kicker, deep. And it's Matt Myatt at the 15, the 20, the 25, the 30. Goes up the middle. It's got a seam, 35-40. And he's brought down right at the 40-yard line on a nice 25-yard return by Matt Myatt. 
And if it wasn't for uh, Dan Turnage, the senior for Thunder Academy, he would have had a lot more yardage because he just got an ankle on him, uh, ankle tackle on him, and uh, Deering is starting in very good shape. Deering High School will run in high formation, and uh, the coaching staff says they're a right-handed team. In other words, they roll right, they give right more than they go left. So that's a tendency that Thorne will look for. We'll take a look as uh, they set the backfield for you. Brent Blackman, number 23, is the quarterback. Richards, the fullback, and Chris Austin is the uh, safety. Uh, excuse me, the tail back. Matt Myatt with a catch. Oh, off his fingertips at the 30-yard line as Blackmere put it right on target and Myatt, the flanker, down at the 30-yard line of Thornton Academy, nearly had six right there. Looks like quick strikes today, the way they're going here. Well, I'll tell you, he was wide open and uh, Dave Goulet was the man on coverage and Dave got beat in pretty good shape right there. Uh, so, uh, fortunately, for Thornton, Deering didn't complete it and Dave will uh, probably not be beat again like that today. All right, uh, second and 10 from the 40-yard line of the Rams as Blackmere calls signals. He is nailed instantly. Tried to give the handoff uh, to his fullback, and he was nailed by Lance Lavoie, the inside backer. And I'll tell you, Blackmere's going to remember his number. It's going to be a long afternoon with Lavoie in your face because he's a big one, and he loves to hit. Loss of four on the play, third and 14. Come on. Well, Thornton Academy plays a lot of games up front, and that, by that we mean the uh, tackles and the down tackles and the linebackers play games. They'll tap each other, and one will go one way, one will go the right, the other way, and I think that was uh, the situation there. The game was played, and nobody picked up uh, Lavoie. Lavoie, the right tackle, was right in the in Blackbeard's uh, pocket. Black made a throw over the middle, shy as the ball is underthrown, intended for uh, receiver. Grant, the intended receiver, and uh, incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down in a punting situation. Well, there was a tremendous rush again put on by Thornton Academy, and, and off these first few plays, it looks like Thornton Academy is certainly ready to play today. Very, very aggressive, uh, both offensively and defensively. Back to receive uh, the punt, Dana Lambert. Back to receive the punt. Richards gets it off. It goes right to Lambert at the 31. Fakes to uh, Langstaff and comes uh, 40, the 45, the 50. He's inside the Graham territory and he's taken down in around the 37-yard line. But we've got flags back upfield and that may come back as it could be a clip. We'll see what that's all about. But that was a beautiful fake reverse as uh, Lambert brings it all the way back. But uh, it may be nullified here. Well, that was an excellent uh, return set up by Thornton Academy. You can see the wall developing right here in front of us. Mike Vigio came back uh, on a comeback block and just leveled one of the daring players. Uh, but the whole, the whole team seemed to be lined up in a wall right here in front of us. You can see the, the thing develop uh, perfectly. But uh, to no avail, it is brought back. Yeah, it was a uh, penalty against the, uh, against the uh, receiving team, the uh, Thornton Academy Golden Trojans. So that will all be nullified now as a uh, penalty will bring the ball back to the 25 where it's first and 10. 9.33 to go here in the first quarter. Thornton Academy leading on Pete Sideway scoreboard 6-0. On the I formation, Summer with the fake. Pitch back, goes to Goulet. Goulet fumbles. And it looks like it's at the 21-yard line where it's recovered by Thornton Academy, but they will sustain a loss. That'll bring up second down and 14. And for Deering, number 23, uh, Brent Blackmere uh, played that perfectly. He just uh, come up, read the option, and was right on the Thorn Academy backfield, causing that, that uh, fumble on the pitch by Summers. All right, it's second down at 14 with a loss of four on the uh, errant pitch back as uh, Goulet. Gets back those four yards, gets to the 25. Good hard nose running on the right side following his blocking. That'll bring up the third down and 10 for Thorn Academy. As uh, coming in with a play from the bench and the sideline, uh, Dana Lambert, number 29. And he just had a super run back on that uh, punt by Richards moments ago, but it was nullified by an illegal block. 
tackle made uh, for Darren High School was Greg Haskell. He seems to be the defensive captain out there calling all the signals. Dennis Steves, wide right, and uh, Lambert wide left as Summers wants to throw. Intercepted by the Rams. It's uh, number 33 on that ball as uh, Bill Gerber with the interception. And a key interception because that gives uh, the Rams excellent field position. Now as they will take over on offense. Ball now spotted at the 33-yard line of Thornton Academy. Well, apparently uh, Chris either didn't see the man or uh, uh, thought he could force it through him because it was a pretty easy interception for Bill. The deep man had uh, had at least some opening uh, or at least some room, but I don't, I'm not sure, as you say, that Chris saw him. Pitch back to the right side goes to Austin. Austin is tripped up in the backfield nicely by John Duceppes as uh, Austin goes down at the 32-yard line, a gain of a yard, but a nice uh, a anticipation there and uh, penetration by John Duceppes, who has all the qualities of going to a Division I school next year, certainly, physically and otherwise. Oh, he's a big boy. Dave Goulet helped finish off that tackle for Thornton. Split wide to the left side. Now for the uh, Rams is uh, Matt Myatt out of the I formation. Black Mare gives to the second man through the tailback, and Lavoy right in his pocket as Lavoy just saddles Chris Austin with a big tackle in the backfield that time and drops him for a two-yard loss. Third down now and a long 11 as the ball moves back to the 34. Thornton's defense really stiffening. Well, Lavoy is, is playing. He's one of the down linemen, and uh, they really are playing a lot of games. Uh, they also play games on the outside corners here, the defensive end and the outside linebackers. Very confusing for an offense, unless they learn from their wisdom and pick up uh, these games that they're playing. Third and long, Blackbeard is to pass. Flat pass, and it's uh, dropped by Myatt. It will go incomplete as they try to spring Myatt loose on the uh, left side one-on-one, -on -one, but they had double coverage on him, and uh, had he caught that, Josh, he really wouldn't have gone anywhere anyway. No, uh, he, had, he had a single blocker out there. It was kind of a uh, very uh, small screen, I guess you could call it, but... Uh Thorn Academy plays very good defense. They they have the, they have less they have uh, jobs to do each and every person, and they don't divert from the, those jobs until the play is actually over. 6:31 to go here in the first quarter. Your score on the Pete's Hardware scoreboard still reads six nothing. Thornton leading the Rams. Back to kick. That is 47 at the Thornton 47 is Richards. Just a short one. He, he drives it way. to about the 15, uh, down inside the 10. Lambert picks it up at the 5 and is taken down immediately on a nice tackle there by uh, one of the Rams trying to pick up his number as he goes to the sideline. But a good coverage there by the Rams as they... Uh, it looked like Steve Newcomb, number 41, for right. Daring High Rams. Good break for Daring, and uh, Thorn is in uh, deep in their, their own territory here, and we'll probably see some... Pounding out by Lavoy just to get out of here. On the five-yard line, they've got 95 yards to go for a score this time uh, as they scored after just three plays in the opening series. Summer with a handoff to the tailback. Goulet, and he is swarmed under right at the line of scrimmage. No gain that time, so it's going to bring up a second and long. Still 10 yards to go as the defense stiffening for both teams here in the uh, second and third series. Well, Deering uh, senses a kill here, but when they have Thornton pinned so deeply, Bill Lynn, the left defensive end, just just uh, zoomed right in there and uh, called the tackler uh, for a just about a one-yard gain, I guess we could give him. Second and about nine and a half, as Summers brings him out in the I formation. They split DeRosia left. But the handoff is just given to Lavoy. Lavoy breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage and goes seven more yards on his own as he just broke loose. It looked like they had him for, again, a no-gainer. But Lance Lavoy is so strong and so uh, much of a competitor that he got an extra seven or eight yards just on desire. Well, that was pure strength because he was pure and simply wrapped up, ready to go down, except he wasn't going to go down in his own mind. He just broke right through there. Richards, I think, was the one that finally brought him down. Third down and uh, three yards to go as the ball now rests at the 13-yard uh, line. To give again to Lavoy, the up man, and uh, he didn't get the first down, so it looks like... It's awful unless, close. Well, second effort. Second he, effort. I said that, and then he gave an extra e effort, and uh, it's going to be very, very close. He may have it. When he, It looked like he was down again, George, oh, but he just doesn't want to go down. He's got it. 
right to the 15, and that's where they needed. First effort, he was down short of about uh, by uh, about a yard, and then I kind of glanced away, and the next thing I knew, he had gotten that extra uh, yard on just the last uh, second lunge. Well, Thorne Academy is no different in bit, uh, than Benefit in the sense that they establish their fullback each and every game. They work plays off their fullback. He has to gain yardage for the offense to be effective. Tom Langstaff coming in with a play from the bench has split wide to the left side. DeRosia split wide right out of the eye. First and 10 at the 15. Lavoy again breaks a tackle at the 20. 25, another tackle, 30, 35. What beautiful running by this strong fullback. Once he gets into the open, he doesn't look like a fullback anymore. He has halfback moves, and yet he's well over 200 pounds. Well, you know, many fullbacks, once they break the line of scrimmage, they actually look for people to hit because that's the type of person they are. But Lavoie sidesteps these people. He's an excellent runner for a big boy. He certainly is, and he picks up another first and 10 for the Golden Trojans as the ball now is at the 20, uh, excuse me, 34-yard line. Summers with the option right side. Cuts back in, holds on, and picks up about four. Close to the 40-yard line. That's their uh, own 40. Inside four minutes to go, first quarter. Still 6-0 on your Pete's Hardware scoreboard. Thornton Academy with that early score by Lance Lavoie. Three-yard run. The, the point after kick by Todd Maurice was uh, wide. They put uh, Langstaff into the slot right side and split DeRosia right out of the eye once again as uh, the tailback, Goulet. Goulet up over the 45 to the 50 and into Ram territory and another first and 10. So now they're starting to find some holes. They're starting to really work that during defense. Well, they've, they've ripped off some uh, some really good yardage right directly up the middle. It looks like uh, 21 yards for Lavoie uh, a couple of plays ago, 11 yards for the tailback here. And... Uh, it looks like uh, Thornton obviously has found something right dead in the middle of Deering's defense that they feel is weak. Mike Vigu, Eric Sargent, Glenn Arnold, and uh, John DeSepis, along with Chad Snow, all up front in that uh, offensive unit, and they certainly are working hard up there to provide the openings for uh, their running backs. DeRosier again split wide right, and it's uh, Lambert split to the left side. Hand off to the fullback, Lavoie. Lavoie gets just three or four this time, but right up the middle. And again, they're wearing that defensive unit down and moving the ball uh, very, very methodically. And uh, Pete Tangway for Deering uh, helped out on the tackle there, but L Lavoie generally uh, attracts two to three people. Uh, he's an awfully big, tough kid to bring down. Played uh, linebacker last year, and uh, 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 late in the year, George, I uh, remember that... Uh, Coach Agresti moved him to fullback spot just on occasion, but uh, he must have seen something he liked, of course. Uh, when they lost a good one to Jeff Sear, and Jeff was injured part of the year, certainly they tried him out. Goulet, right side, and he gets a few more yards as he's up over and inside the 45-yard line to the 43-yard line of the Rams. That'll bring up third and three for the uh, driving Thornton Academy Golden Trojans. And Bill Lynn uh, for Deering, uh, along with number 52, which uh, at the moment I don't have a number for, a name for... Uh, we must apologize, Deering. by the way. We uh, did not get a complete roster from the Deering Rams, and uh, so if we don't identify 100% uh, of the uh, the Rams, it's uh, it's not an oversight. It's just uh, something, one of those circumstances beyond our control, and I hope you'll bear with us. But we'll do the best we can under the circumstances, and Lavoie doing uh, his very best as he gets enough for the first down, gets inside the 40 to about the 38-yard line as he is wrapped up there nicely by the middle of the Deering line, but uh, a little too late as he picks up his fifth or the fifth first down for uh, Thornton Academy. Well, Thornton Academy is just grinding it, grinding it out on the ground, uh, mostly right up the middle, and eventually you're going to see the outside uh, corner soften up because they're going to have to play that fullback real tough. You're going to see Summers spread right around the corner with option on some, some of these plays. Less than a minute and a half to go in the first quarter. Thornton's still leading it 6 nothing. Summers drops straight back, looks to throw, left side. He's got Langstaff at the 10, a diving try, but he just comes up empty. Chris Austin with the coverage along with Matt Myatt. That pass just missed by a foot, maybe a foot and a half from being six points. Well, it, the receiver was there. The pass was a little overthrown. I guess we're not going to see a short passing game. <laughs> but uh, every time we think short, right. they go long, George. That's all right. They've they, got us well scouted. They know what they're doing. <laughs> 
Second and 10 from the 38-yard uh, line of the Rams. Thornton Academy here on this uh, long, sustained drive. They split DeRozier wide left. But just get checked out. Dennis Steves wide left. Option. Option play and a pitch back to Gullett. Gullett from Summers tries to turn the corner but can't get as much as he'd like. Driven out of bounds on a nice uh, head-on tackle by Chris Austin. And uh, number 52, as we mentioned, and I, we really can't give credit because we're not sure who 52 is for the Rams. Pick up there on the play, uh, short gain, uh, third and five, and we've got a timeout on the field by Coach Leroy. We'll be right back, right after three yards. It should be right close to the line of scrimmage, but uh, Deering played it well. Yes, they did. They, uh, they had good penetration, actually, and uh, that did cause the uh, shortage of yardage. Goulette gets the handoff this time uh, from uh, Summers and goes right side, is shot of the first down as he gets to the 33-yard line of the Rams. That'll bring up fourth down and four. So uh, this is a decision time for Coach Agresti. Of course, he'll probably go for it. But again, uh, it's a critical play as uh, to whether they can continue sustaining this drive or have to give the ball up to the Rams. Well, we'll see if the old short passing game that I predicted comes into play here because they need, uh, you know, close to five yards to uh, pull this first down off. So time enough for maybe one more play here in the first quarter as Summers brings them out of the huddle. They have uh, two people set wide right. And Summer with the handoff to Lavoy. Lavoy stood right up beautifully in the middle of that line by Angus McDuffie as they met him head on. And I think he's going to be shy. He is shy of the first down by about a yard or so. That will give the ball to the Rams with just one second left in the uh, first period. The Rams will take over on offense as they trail 6-0. Well, that's, I'm glad we got his name because he's a, he's he's a, a very good player. He's been in a lot of plays. Well, the clock uh, runs out, and as they go back upfield, we'll take a break with the score after one period complete on your Pete's Hardware scoreboard. The Thorn Academy Golden Trojans, six, and the Rams, nothing. Our insurance company supply at 381 Main Street in Biddeford. And if you're looking for a hard-to-find item, call Pickard's Feed and Supply at 284-7801. That's Pickard's Feed and Supply of Biddeford at 284-7801. 7801. DeVoe Color Center, your one-stop decorating center. All this month, DeVoe has a wallpaper carpet sale. All in-stock wallpaper is marked off 50% as usual. But now, save 20 to 30% on all custom orders. Pick from Waltex, Sanitas, and Strawn. This sale ends September 30th. DeVoe has carpet by DuPont marked down 4 to $7 a square yard installed. DeVoe Color Center on Elm Street in Biddeford next to Dunkin' Donuts. When it's worth doing right, use DeVoe. As we pick up the action, second and ten on a short gain on a quarterback, quarterback keep by Blackmere. A second and eight, excuse me, a two-yard pickup by Blackmere. As the ball is at the 32, pitch to Richards. Richards right side, turns the corner at the 40. The 45, driven out of bounds, but he's got enough for the first down. And Richards showed his speed there as he got outside and just wrote, ran some of the uh, middle secondary, George, and uh, gets the first down for the Rams. Well, that's their first first down of the afternoon. And actually, he was uh, set to be tackled at least twice that I saw. Made a couple of jukes on the man, and that's what the speed will do for you. He has good moves, and of course, once he gets wide and has a little operating room, he's tough to bring down. He's very, very strong, very compact. Not much more than 5'7", but uh, he's got legs on him that are just uh, unbelievably big because he's a track man as well. Out of the eye formation, they split Myatt left. Black made a throw. Short pass complete to, uh, it is complete, I believe, to uh, number 41, Steve Newcomb, as uh, they pick up five yards right at midfield. Second down and five on a nice diving catch. He was diving away from us. Hard to tell if he held on, but it looked complete at first, and it was, but he was driven out of bounds. 11.01 to go, second quarter, as the Rams trail by six, trying to get back into this contest. Well, it's a good first down play, good five-yard pickup, nice little quick uh, square out. Tough to defend those plays. Myatt split wide to the left side in the flanker position, out of the straight eye formation. As Blackmere, the quarterback, uh, gives uh, fake to the first man through and gives pitchbacks to Austin. Austin cuts it upfield at the 40-yard line, and he's got enough for the first down as he picks up uh, about 11 on that carry. Ball at the 39-yard line as the tailback, Chris Austin, doing a good job getting uh, outside on the option play. 
Blackmere filling in for a young man by the name of Steve McKenzie, who uh, was battling for this same quarterback spot. But I understand that uh, McKenzie, after noticing he lost a job to Blackmere, quit the team. Uh, kind of unfortunate, uh, I'm sure, for Bill Leroy and the uh, squad. But this young Blackmere is a good two-way player and uh, showing why he uh, obviously got the number one call. Well, he's got plenty of people to work with in the backfield. What he's doing nicely is faking to the fullback, which gives that tailback breathing room to uh, take the corner on either side. First and 10, and uh, we've got a whistle. Maybe a delay of game. Yep. Maybe a delay of game as he took too long getting that play off. Ten and a half minutes to go in the second period as uh, Pete's Hardware scoreboard still reading Thornton Academy 6 and nothing for the visiting Rams. I think what we're seeing here now is a little shift in the momentum just a little bit here because uh, uh, Thornton Academy was really rolling up the yard. In fact, in the first quarter alone, they had 73 yards on the ground. That, that's a lot of yardage. It certainly is. A little shift in momentum here, though, for Deering. Deering looking like uh, they've got their confidence back as uh, Maya to split to the right side and uh, on the left side is split in Steve Newcomb. Blackmere gives it a tailback. Austin. Austin right up to the right side, and he gets to the 40-yard line. Good enough for uh, nearly enough to get that uh, penalty yardage back. As they move these sticks, it's a four-yard pickup, so it'll be second and 11 at the 40 of Thorn Academy. And for daring number 82, Rocco DeLuca. I just love that name. He made the tackle, uh, bringing down Austin. Uh, well, you, yeah, just about a four-yard game. For Thorn, Thorn's Rocco DeLuca. Yeah, I love that name. Yeah, <laughs> that's, like, that's a good one. That, that sounds like a football player to me. Him and McDuffie, they make a good That's player. right. <laughs> so it's second and 11 as Blackmere gives it a second man down the counter. Oh. And it's going to be Austin who is uh, stormed under there by Glenn Arnold at the 40-yard line. About a half-yard gain, third and 11. Well... We might be give, being kind to him by giving him a half-yard gain, even at that, Dick. Uh, uh, they set the ball back again, I guess. Uh, yeah. They had it up uh, around the 40. Now they get it back to the 40 uh, and a half. Yeah, that was a super defensive play uh, because he looked like he was off to the races there, except for uh, Fournier. He wasn't fooled at all right there as uh, Blackmere wants to throw. Straight oh, drop. Know. Goes deep. Underthrown, and we've got a flag. Down at the 30-yard line, away from the uh, spot of the receiver. We'll see what that's all about. Uh, I was mistaken on that last play. That was uh, Glenn Arnold. Yes. Yeah. Give credit where credit is due. Glenn Arnold, Glenn right. Arnold. Number 60. And we've got a... Uh, in Thornton. Thornton Academy, a, a pushing uh, interference call against them. Uh, Thornton Academy, so that will uh, change the whole complexion here, George. Instead of fourth down and uh, maybe giving up the ball, that's going to make it uh, that's a bit, ten, ten yards. Well, no, right 15. 15, I'm sorry. Okay, 15. So that's going to be automatic first and 10, and... Uh, deeper now into Thornton Academy territory at the 25-yard line. Well, I didn't see the the, uh, the penalty itself, but I'm, I'm sure there was an infraction here, but that's a that's a big one that could possibly hurt uh, Thornton Academy because uh, they might have forced them into a punt situation there. No question about it. First and 10, two men wide right side now as they uh, have a double setback. The pitch back goes to Richards. Richards goes right side, cuts back in, but uh, they... Uh, Spread that play out nicely as Thornton's defense right there to, to meet Richards at the corner and uh, only able to pick up maybe a yard. Second and a long nine as Richards couldn't really turn the corner. Well, Billy Fournier for uh, Thornton Academy eventually made the tackle, but uh, initially Billy didn't play it quite, uh, that all that well because he went after the quarterback. His obvious responsibility was the pitch man. So uh, I'm sure the coaches will remind Billy, you got pitch man, you got pitch man. All right. Second and long as Blackman wants to throw. Flare pass is incomplete to Richards as uh, he was on the left side trying to uh, break it again. Uh, one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, Blackmere got a lot of pressure from the internal lineman and uh, had to get rid of it early. So with 8.04 to go, second quarter, 6-0, the uh, Golden Trojans still holding on here, and the defense being tested down deep in their own territory now at the 25. 
Thought Academy feels that they're going to have to take some of their big people out of the game because they're two-way players. People like Lance Savoy, John Giuseppe, they might be in there now, but some players they won't because they have to get a breather. They split uh, number 20 wide uh, left, Tony Willette, and uh, just a decoy as they go right up the right side. Richards, the ball carrier, gets uh, maybe three yards, and this will bring up fourth down and seven. Ball at the 22-yard line now. The officials for this uh, afternoon's contest, by the way, Steve, um, uh, Manili. Manili, excuse yeah. me, and Ed McDonough, um, along with Bruce Campbell, Greg Flaherty, uh, Phil Williams, and up in the booth here with us, the timer, Babe Anderson. Big play, fourth down and seven or eight. Pitch back, goes to the tailback, Austin. Austin eludes a tackler in the backfield and uh, then is brought down from behind before he can turn the corner. Number 34, Jeff Jerry right there on the play and saved uh, some pretty good yardage as uh, Austin started to uh, turn it upfield. Well, that, that in itself is a momentum uh, builder for uh, Thornton Academy because uh, Deering was moving the ball very well. They picked up a couple of first downs. They picked up a lot of rushing yardage using the clock, and it's still only six to nothing here, so it's one of those games where I think a costly mistake could cost you the game. Offensively now, Summer brings him out of the huddle. He splits Lambert wide to the left side and Dennis Steves wide right side, out of the eye. At the 20-yard uh, line, line of scrimmage, Goulet. Goulet the tailback up over the 30 and has got enough for the first and 10. He's brought down there with a saving tackle in the uh, middle secondary by Richards and also uh, number 55 on the stop helping out there was Bill Lynn. But he picked up about 11 on that carry, so a good uh, run by the tailback, Goulet. Excellent. And it's, you know, it's right up the middle, so obviously the offensive guards and the center for Thorn Academy doing a whale of a job. Ed Sargent at center, Glenn Arnold and Mike Vigio on the guard position. Back Summer gives to the Goulet again, goes right side. Richards right there to uh, stick him uh, and then help by again, number 55, who has uh, been in on a lot of stops today, Bill Lynn. But he did pick up another three yards as he gets up over the 35-yard line to uh, the 37. Give him four on that carry, second down and six. And we're going to take a pause. We'll be right back with more Thorn Academy football with the uh, Golden Trojans leading 6-0. Mark LeBlanc here, and I want to talk about service. At LeBlanc's Audio and Video Center, we provide service before, during, and after the sale. We service before the sale by providing the largest selection of console and table model televisions in the area. We service during the sale by helping you decide which model best suits your needs and lifestyle. Most importantly, we service after the sale. We're committed to providing the best service possible. Whether it's in warranty or 10 years down the road, we'll be there to back up our products. LeBlanc's Audio and Video Center, 471 Elm Street, Bitterford, where you don't just buy a TV, you invest in the family tradition of service. Third down and uh, three to go as Lavoie picks up a couple more yards on the carry right up the middle. As they break huddle, Summers looks over the defense. Gives to the tailback, Goulet. Goulet up over the 40 and uh, will not get to the uh, first down marker as he has hit hard there by Blackmere, number 23, and Bill Lynn once again. Lynn on uh, about almost every stop here in the last series of plays. Fourth down and a, lo uh, a long yard, all well, about a yard to go at the 42-yard uh, line. So Thornton Academy uh, probably will, uh, will be punting it away here. Well, I don't see him taking a, a chance uh, when they're on their own 43-yard uh, line. So they'll probably will punt it. At least Deering thinks so. They're set up for it. Too much game left. 4.36 to go as the uh, Golden Trojans still leading the Rams. 6-0 on that early score by Lance Lavoie. A three-yard run in the first period. During the punting is uh, for the Trojans. Uh, number 85, is it? Or six? 87. 87, excuse me. Uh, Eric Peterson? It is. Eric Peterson gets a kick off around the 26, and it goes right out of bounds at the uh, 80 at the 25-yard line. So Eric Peterson coming in to do the punting, and uh, the kick goes out of bounds. So no run back as it goes out of bounds right at the 25-yard line strike. 
tough to pick up some of those numbers when they're sideways out there, and uh, we haven't seen Thornton uh, other than one scrimmage, and they didn't have their jerseys on yet. So uh, bear with us. We'll be there, and uh, we've got a long season to go. We'll have all those numbers down pat before long. And surprisingly, uh, the, the wind has kicked up a little bit. Uh, Peterson had to kick that right in the face of that wind. Did a nice job. As they break huddle at 25, Deering will go on offense now with 4.12 to go. Some movement uh, by uh, number 34 of the uh, Golden uh, Trojans. That's uh, Jeff Jarry. And uh, a flag on the play. And that will go against Jarry and the Thornton Academy. Well, you know, the coach is going to say, Jeff, the ball is exactly right in front of you. How in the world can you uh, can you jump off sides? You know, and that, you know you see you see the person jumping off sides. That is the nose man a lot, and you wonder why. You wonder how. Well, they try to get that little extra step. There's no question about it. As Blackmere fakes the uh, pitch and uh, goes right side, gets up over the 30-yard line to the 33 of uh, the Rams, and uh, that'll bring up a uh, third down and two. A second down and two, excuse me, after the penalty. Second down and two after that penalty of five yards against uh, Sesta, against Thornton Academy. So after uh, some uh, opening quick hitters and uh, the quick score, things have settled down here, George, and the dust has settled, and we've got ourselves a pretty good defensive well, I, battle. I think we predicted this. This is on paper, they're even. Blackmere gives to the tailback. Austin breaks it to the right side, 35, 40, 45 to midfield. And brought down beautifully by Doug Goulet. Uh, excuse me, Dave Goulet. It's about 14 yards on that running play uh, right up the middle. And Austin showing uh, great versatility and speed as he broke the right side. And for one of the uh, better long gainers that uh, Deering can uh, take credit for thus far, the ball at the 49-yard line as knee evidently hit just a little bit shy of midfield. And that'll be first and 10 as the Rams showing some... Uh, Signs of uh, a big play here and there. Blackmere wants to throw. Got a man deep, but underthrows him. That's Blackmere. For some reason, because uh, he had some pressure, Deceptus right in his face. Yeah. Uh, that, that's enough pressure for anyone. It sure is, and he had a lot of help along, uh, with uh, uh, Rocco DeLuca also was in there. Big Rocco right there alongside of Big John. So uh, I guess that uh, caused a little bit of a wobble on the uh, throw. Second and 10 on the incomplete pass. And we've got an equipment timeout. Officials, uh, well, I guess they've got to untangle a chain across the way on the chain gang. So uh, we'll take a break, and we'll be right back right after this. Quick Print Color Center and Printex of Portland deliver quality. Quick Print has acquired Printex Printing, and now they can offer a wider range of services at more affordable prices. Raised letterheads, business cards, and anything raised can now be done in-house. When you're on a deadline, the Quick Print Color Center will make sure you meet that date. The Quick Print Color Center, 510 Main Street in Saco. We're your one-stop, quick and easy, people-pleasing print shop. Second down and 10, ball resting just uh, alongside the, mid the midfield stripe. 3.14 to go. You're listening to 96 HYRFM. Dick Leone and George Hogan Sr. bringing you all the action. Fumble on a uh, exchange by Blackmere, but he very alertly uh, covers his own fumble. Loses about two yards on the play, but they do retain possession of the ball. Now uh, the ball is resting at the about the 49-yard uh, line. He only lost about a yard, but uh, they did lose that whole play, of course, and now that brings up third and long. You know, what a turnaround, though. In the first period, Dick, uh, Deering, I had him for a minus five yards on the ground, that is. And in the second period here, they're probably got, I haven't added, a, you know, the, I see at least 60 yards here. So uh, what a turnaround. It's like two different uh, games, uh, yeah. first and second quarter. Uh, T.A. Uh, dominated early. Now Deering seems to uh, have control. Long pass. Intended for, and nice play there, broken up, intended for Steve Newcomb. Good defensive play by Chris Summer, the safety, as uh, that one had some zip on it. Looked like uh, when Blackmere has a little time, he can really get rid, get rid of that ball, and uh, Newcomb had to fight Christian Summers for that one, and Summers won that battle. Fourth and ten as uh, the punting unit comes on. And I'll tell you that Blackmere stood in there very strong and sturdy because uh, I think Lavoie was right in his face along with number 82 for Thornton Academy. Uh, Rocco, Rocco DeLuca. DeLuca. He's, he's playing a very good game, Rocco's. Hank Richards, Jr. 
High end over end kick to Lambert. Lambert at the 16, fumbles. And maybe uh, his uh, sidekick picked it up. It looks like he had some help there. There were two people back, and it is Tom Langstaff, the sophomore, right there to help uh, as Lambert fumbled it, but Langstaff alertly pounced on the fumble and uh, covered it. So the uh, Golden Trojans, with 2.21 left in the half, will take over at their own 18-yard line, first and 10. And uh, so far, Deering is playing a very smart ball game. You have to give them credit for that because they're punting when they're supposed to, they're getting good coverage, and they're just hoping for a break. Dennis Steve split wide to the right side. In the slot is uh, Lambert. Out of the eye, once again, as Christian Summers, uh, the quarterback, gives off to the fullback, Lavoy. Lavoy stopped and then gains uh, maybe another yard or so as he gets late penetration to the 20-yard line. Inside two minutes to go here in the half. If you joined us late, Pete's hardware school board still reads 6-0, Thornton leading, thanks to Lance Lavoy's three-yard run at the 11.03 mark of the first quarter. You know, during high school, Dick has uh, one of my uh, old football players, uh, he actually is a young man, uh, Chuck Chevenel. Uh, he played at Orchard Beach, and he's the uh, uh, backfield coach for Deary. All right. Nice to have that old Orchard connection. Oh, yeah. Summers to Langstaff. Runs out of territory as the uh, ball is thrown into the uh, bench area of Thornton Academy and out of bounds. So uh, Summers had something on that one, but he ran out of... Uh, territory or field if you will 123 left to go here in the uh, first half of play third down and eight for the golden trojans who are in their own end at the 20. well they better check that flag because if, if chris is uh, called on to throw those uh, those, si those side passes uh, and that was a long pass uh, they're going to get picked off because the wind really held that up yeah, the flag is going from right to left, and that's exactly where they're going, from left to right, right into the wind right. at this point in time. In motion is Lambert. Again, Summers to throw. He's got Steves deep. He runs right side, throws to the short man, and a good defensive play as they had the tight end, Scotty Newman, coming across, and he was broken up nicely by number eight, Brian Latat, on a great play as he hit Newman just at the si same time as the ball hit Newman's hands. And this is a new position for uh, Scott Newman, and Scott Newman is a boy that uh, will do anything for Thornton Academy. He was uh, guard, he was tackle, he's called upon to be tight end uh, today, and he's, you know, he's got a bad ankle there, but I'm telling you, this boy will do anything to help Thornton Academy. He sure will, and uh, he's a good one. He's a keeper. And again, Eric Peterson, the punter, lines up around the uh, eight-yard line, and uh, we've got a, uh, an official's timeout momentarily here, but uh, he will be kicking away, and uh, the deep man is Austin. The up man looks to be Richards. Well, I think Austin is way too deep uh, considering this win, but let's see. It is a short kick, lands at the 40. Bounces to the 45 of T.A., goes to the 49-yard line and is down there by uh, number 70, Al Pelletier. So uh, Deering, with a minute and six seconds to go, I guess they should call it Geronimo, eh? And uh, go to that two-minute drill. <laughs> Just an inside joke, huh, Judge? Well, I think Geronimo <laughs> refers to the benefit coaching yes, staff in that two-minute drill, right? Just kidding. And I the, love that. The benefit staff great. is right down here in front yes, of me. Yes, they are. Over here to the right. That's what made me think of it. Yeah, I, uh, I love that when they hold at Geronimo because that's the <laughs> signal for that two-minute drill. So I don't know what uh, Bill Leroy's uh, code word is, but uh, maybe we could find that out. Yeah, Cochise, maybe. <laughs> Cochise, yeah. <laughs> As Blackmere wants to throw, throws uh, shy once again. He didn't get enough on that one. And for some reason, he's having trouble either gripping the ball. Right. That time, he didn't have any pressure to speak of. But he just didn't get the uh, spiral, the tight spiral that he wanted. And he had Matt Myatt down deep enough around the 20-yard line. However, Myatt was covered very, very nicely by the secondary of Thorn Academy. So second and 10, ball right at midfield. Well, you're right. Uh, he doesn't seem to have uh, full leverage or uh, grip on the ball. Uh, a lot of his passes are to throw maybe he's trying to overthrow i think those passes are a little long for him that could be and he may have a small hand because uh, he's not the biggest of uh, youngsters out there he's uh, i would say mu much more than uh uh 5 10 5 uh, 11 at the most and uh, that may be uh, being charitable maybe even less and this time he overthrows he may have heard us george he had Myatt at the 40 yard line overthrew him by three or four yards well 
I guess they feel their only hope at this point is to pass the ball down the field um, with a minute, well, they're down to 42 seconds, so, uh, but they've got to get a first down here, or Thornton's going to have a shot. They've got uh, third down and 10. Third and 10 now as uh, play comes in from the sidelines from uh, Bill Leroy and his staff, and we'll see what they can come up with here on third and long at the 50-yard line. Rams trying to get on the board and get things evened up at halftime. They trail by six. Blackmere, straight drop, wants to throw again. Flare pass, overthrows Richards. Richards was uh, only about six, seven yards to his right, but he, uh, he didn't have the touch on that one as he line-drived it and uh, sort of uh, needed to put a little bit of a loft on it and just let him run under it. So that'll bring up fourth down and a punting situation with 36 seconds left to go. And uh, it will be Richards doing the punting. Now, so far, Thornton Academy has run punt return. This is a situation where they might try to punt block, but no, they're set up in punt return because they have three deep receivers. Richards at the 40, almost blocked. End over end to Lambert. Lambert takes it on the run at the 24, up to the 30. Breaks the tackle, goes out of bounds wisely, and is driven actually out of bounds by Bill Lynn at around the 35-yard line of Thornton Academy. 29 seconds left on the clock here in the half as the Deering Rams trail this one, 6-0. Well, my guess here at this point is Thornton Academy is going to be happy to go in at 6-0 and not do anything foolish here, but uh, we'll probably see him 60-yard bomb or something. <laughs> <laughs> Summers, short drop, wants to pass. He's got Steves on the right sideline, and they get tangled up with Richards in their feet, and uh, they throw a flag on that one as Richards and Steves hook up cleats at the 40-yard line of the Rams and a late flag thrown. And uh, an obvious pass uh, interference call, I would assume, by the uh, looks of that flag. Yeah. In all honesty, though, that wasn't That's an incidental call. contact, so, uh, yeah. you know. The but, receiver had to slow down, which caused Richards uh, to run into him. Run up his back, yeah, yes. Yeah. He played catch-up, and in so doing, they get tangled up in their cleats. And uh, I, I think there was a little hesitation on the uh, part of the official. Right. But uh, he did throw it. Yeah, I, I I sure, I'm sure when the rule went up that he decided he'd best pull that flag out, and that's about the timing of the flag. <laughs> but nevertheless, <laughs> it will be first and 10 ball now at the 50-yard line. 24 seconds remaining. Steve's wide left in the uh, slot left side is Tom. Langstaff, the sophomore. Christian rolls left, wants to throw deep. He's got Langstaff. Caught at the 25. Complete. 15 seconds to go. As Langstaff came in between the defenders and uh, beat Myatt to the ball. Myatt made the tackle, but not until Tom Langstaff picks up 25 yards on that, carry, on that uh, completion from uh, Summers. And... Uh, Chris, Christian Summers put the, uh, put the ball right where he needed to that time. A timeout by the uh, Golden Trojans to talk things over. And we'll take a break with the score on Pete's Hardware scoreboard reading 6-0 Thorn. We'll be right back. One of the best places in Southern Maine for good food with the best deals around can be found at the Super Sub House of Saco. The Super Sub House serves breakfast all day long and is a great place for lunch and dinner, too. The Super Sub House serves abundant hot and cold subs, calzones, salads, spaghetti dinners, seafood dinners, and always my favorite, mouth-watering desserts. The Super Sub House, indeed, has the best deals in town, and they feature children's menu, and senior citizens receive a 15% discount. The Super Sub House, Elm Street and Saco, open seven days a week through in this final 15 seconds before they go into halftime. Chris did a great job of maneuvering back there because Dennis Morris was all over him in the backfield. Out of the eye. Lambert split wide right. Some of the throw. He throws towards Steves. Knocked away by, uh, by Myatt and nearly intercepted at the goal line. As Steves went down the left side, cut toward the goal post, and Matt Myers right there, Myatt right there to... Uh, to uh, knock that ball away and nearly came up with the interception. And uh, well, Myatt is down, I believe, uh, maybe just shaken up. I think probably he is. But, uh, you know, wide open in the end zone was Dana Lambert. He was jumping up and down. But, you know, it's, it's difficult to see the whole field when you're under pressure. Especially when uh, he had uh, Steves, I think, as his yeah. primary target. Yeah. Yes, it is. Excuse me, it is Matt Meyer, Myatt. And uh, he is down on one knee now, being uh, looked at, attended to. Uh, nothing serious, I don't think, but uh, 
But even in this first half, Dick, I, can, I think we can see the difference in the Thornton Academy football team. Uh, last year, although they would have liked to throw, and I know they, they, they would have liked to throw, uh, they didn't have the capability. They do have that this year. That's true. Uh, of course, they wanted that last year, but they couldn't use that because uh, they had to go to Bill Susie to back up quarterback when uh, Chris Summer was hurt. Replacement is... Uh, Hutchins or right, uh, right, Matt Myatt, who has gone to the sideline under his own power in the uh, secondary. Second down and 10 from the 25 of the Rams with just 10 seconds left to go in halftime. Again, some of the throw to Steves, right side, and nearly caught at the end zone, but uh, good coverage again as they had double coverage. Blackmere in front and behind uh, the receiver, they had... Uh, Richards was Number 14, Hutchins, Hutchins, who just came in to replace Myatt. So they had him sandwiched between, and Steves could not quite bring it in. So four seconds remaining here in the uh, second quarter as they send a play in by uh, Dana Lambert, and they want another timeout to talk it over as it's third and 10, and uh, probably just one more play here before uh, the uh, gun will sound at halftime. But a good first half of play, very defensive-oriented, uh, uh, with only one score taking place. That was uh, uh, by Lance Lavoy, the fullback of Thorn Academy. A three-yard run with just uh, 57 seconds gone in the game. And it looked like they were going to uh, start a runaway stage here at uh, Dr. Hill Stadium. Well, I think all it was a case where they caught somebody somebody up surprise on that first play because that very first play by Summers was a great fake to the fullback. They all just pile onto the fullback. Chris pulled it out, zoomed around the left side, and uh, was off to the races. But I think it more or less caught him by surprise. And uh, I think a lot of coaches try to do that, don't they, George? They, uh, they try to do right. the unsuspecting uh, the first right few up, plays yeah. uh, because people haven't really settled in. The cobwebs sure. haven't cleared, and uh, they, they figure that's a good time to do it. Uh, when you least expect it, and of course, uh, it seems to work most of the time. Yeah, and Thornton Academy uh, will make no bones about it. They want uh, Chris Summers to try to make the big plays, either with the either great fake and keeping it, or throwing the ball, and uh, you know, it shouldn't be no surprise when you stop and look back on it that uh, Chris Summers made that play. He's a great defensive player, as well as uh, being uh, one of their offensive leaders here at quarterback. Yeah. As uh, Agresti returns to the sideline. They send Lambert in motion to the far side, working out of the eye, and uh, Steve's on the right side. They throw over the middle, and it's intended for Scott Newman, uh, deflected away by Hutchins, and uh, that will end the uh, half as they try to get the tight end, Scotty Newman, the ball, but uh, good play there by reserve and backup Brian Hutchins, who came in just moments ago to replace the injured Matt Myatt. So as they go to the locker rooms at Dr. Hill Stadium, it's 6 nothing. Thornton uh, crosswind that has been uh, blowing from right to left, and uh, Thornton is kicking right into that wind. So we'll see what Austin does. He's the uh, deep man, and he is camped around the five or six yard line right now with Myatt and uh, Hank Richards just up uh, about five or ten yards away from him. Uh, they're between the 10 and the 15. To do the kicking, the left-footed kicker, Lance Lavoie, who is the fullback and uh, two-way player on uh, the Staunton Club. A short kick is right, George, and it comes to the 25-yard line. Picked up there by... Uh, well, it's number 35, and let's see if we can find out who he is for you. We uh, don't have his number either, unfortunately. 35 is... Uh, I don't know. We'll ask Enough the back, but anyway, uh, we, uh, as I mentioned at the outset, we don't have a Deering roster today, and so uh, uh, there are a couple of numbers that we just have not been able to pick up. And uh, 35 is uh, Steve, to, well, Greer. Steve Greer. Excuse Steve me. Greer. Steve we found it. Uh, spotter up here uh, happily pointed out who he was. So it's Steve Greer on the return as uh, Austin fights for yardage up the middle, gets to the 37-yard line. Give him the 38, a gain of two, second down and eight for the Rams who are on offense now. And a hot earned two yards on because uh, Lance Lavoy bounced him uh, pretty good in the backfield. Would have been about a three yard uh, loss except for the uh, strength of the legs of uh, Austin. Good running tandem there, Richards and Austin in the backfield here as they split now, two men wide left. And that's Newcomb the deep man, and they uh, use him as a decoy as they go right up the right side. Short yardage once again. Lead block, Lynn, 
from Austin for another couple of yards, and it's going to be third and five as the ball now crosses the 40 to the 41-yard line of the Rams. Just out of the, the third quarter, and the uh, score on your Pete's scoreboard, Pete's Hardware scoreboard reads 6-0, Thornton Academy over the Rams. And uh, Chris Summers, the uh, quarterback for Thornton, just straightened up the ball carrier. A tremendous tackle. It uh, held him to uh, like a two or three yard gain, but a terrific tackle by uh, Chris Summer. Coming up from his safety spot to do that. Blackmere wants to throw right over the middle. Shot pass complete this time. And uh, at the 50, the 40, the 35 yard line. And uh, nice pass, a catch by Dennis Morris as Morris from his tight end spot just cut across so just a little square pattern and a square out if you will and uh, Blackmere with one of his rare completions here I think it's only a second one is it, it it's, of a, the game? it's a second one Dick and uh, not that I'm any smarter than anybody else but it was a little short dump a little crossing pattern and uh, it's about 24 yards on that play first and ten as they move the chains inside Thornton territory to the 34 first down play, Blackmere back to the uh, pitch, back to Austin. Austin bunt, runs into his own man trying to lead the uh, the charge. That was Hank Richards, and that slowed everything up, and there'll be a slight loss on the play, maybe a yard loss. Possibly get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten, we'll I'll, give him the benefit. I'll tell you, Dick, the reason that uh, he ran into Richards is because Sean Ouellette, took on Richards, who was the blocker there, and literally straightened him up, pushed him right back into the runner. Sean Ouellette, uh, the senior for Thornton Academy, tremendous defensive player there. Second and 10 as they break huddle, they put uh, wide, uh, wide out Steve Newcomb to the left, and Maya to the right, out of the eye, to throw, Blackmere, flare pass. This one is complete to Richards, behind the line of scrimmage, but he's dragged down. Nicely from behind by number 81, Bill Fournier. Fournier smelled that one out early, and uh, even though the pass was complete, it was for a loss of two yards, and uh, Richards was uh, caught from behind. No easy feat as Fournier right there on the heels of the receiver. Well, Billy Fournier is a left defensive end, and the quarterback, being short, has to throw up and over, which allowed Billy Fournier to uh, recover, retreat, and make a tackle. Great uh, pursuit by Billy Fournier. They put uh, Newcomb on the right side this time, split out, and uh, then they switch Maya to the left. Blackmere again to throw. Gets pressure. Dumps it off to Richards. Richards at the 40. Nice move. 30. 25. Cuts back inside. 20. He's yeah. going to go all the way. Richards in for the score with three beautiful moves by Hank Richards. <laughs> as he just went left, right, zigzagged his way all the way in from the 33-yard line. 33 yards on that run uh, after he caught the ball on a just a little flare pass from the quarterback, Blackmere. Well, I'll tell you, you'll never see a better job of open field running. And we knew coming into the game as well as Thornton did that uh, Richards could break one of those things at any time. He uh, had the opportunity to be tackled at least three times. Three legitimate shots they had at uh, Richards, and he was not to be denied. Great heart and great effort on that run. Super, super run by uh, Richards. And Richards he's also kicking. Richards to kick. Is up, and it's good. Out of the hold of Matt Myatt and uh, uh, Hutchins, excuse me, Hutchins the holder. So it's 7-6 as Richards does it all, scores from 33 yards out on the pass play, and then puts it through the uprights, and uh, we've got ourselves a scorcher. It certainly is, and uh, uh, I think that the, the coach from Deering, and I'm sure the Thornton's coach as well, said, told these people to settle down, throw your short-range passes, and uh, the long stuff is maybe gone. Uh, until it gets desperation time in the fourth quarter. All three of those passes, uh, one for 24 yards, uh, the one that uh, Billy Fournier retreated in cover, uh, and the one here to Richards were all very, very short passes. Well, as they come back upfield and line up for the uh, kickoff, the uh, Thornton Academy crowd stunned by that beautiful run, and it was a beauty because uh, Richards did all of it on his own. Once he got through the line of scrimmage, he had to uh, make several fakes, did that beautifully as he cut one way, then cut back against the grain, then just cut the other way. It was a zigzag pattern, and he just outran everyone in that secondary to the end zone. 
Well, once you get going, there's really no defense for speed. And good moves, and he certainly had both of those. Richards will kick it off. 8.16 to go. It's 7-6 on your scoreboard as uh, Thornton has uh, led throughout. Now trails. Picked off there by uh, Jerry. Jerry uh, gets it at the 25 or thereabouts, brings it up over the 35 after a short gain of about uh, 9 or 10 yards. So Jeff Jerry gets uh, Thornton Academy uh, up into decent field position at the 36-yard line. And uh, for Deering, uh, Brian Latat, number eight, was in on the tackle uh, in Thorn Academy's off first and 10 on their own 35, 36-yard line. First and 10, Summer with the uh, fake to the uh, fullback, goes left side on the keeper, gets up over the 40-yard line to the 41. Short gain, give him four yards on the uh, play, second and six. Of course, Hank Richards' dad was a, an excellent athlete in his own right. I remember Hank Richards uh, played at South Portland. <laughs> yeah, he, he played at South Portland, Portland and he was, right. a, I think he was a tall, uh, slender man, but uh, a tremendous runner. Just a little bit taller than his boy, I think, but uh, he was solid, too. Yeah. He was uh, a real great athlete. Of course, you're a little younger than I am, John. <laughs> you probably don't remember back then, but uh, <laughs> I do remember seeing him. Uh, Lavoie tripped up at the line of scrimmage as he goes left side and gets maybe a yard. We'll see where his knee hits. Uh, bringing up uh, third down and uh, four to go for the... Uh, Golden Trojans, they're at their own 42 and a half yard line. Well, uh, right off the bat, uh, we've got a big play here for Thorn Academy in the uh, start of the second half. Uh, third down and four. If they get this first down, uh, it'll be a real big momentum uh, uh, keeper for Thorn Academy. It's third and four. They split Lambert wide right. Steve's uh, in a little closer on the left side as Summer runs the option. Cut room, 50. The 45, he's outside, the 40. And he is driven out of bounds by uh, Matt Myatt and Bill Lynn at the 32-yard line of the Rams and a big run. And that was a big play, George. Sure, about 26 yards. 26-yard keeper by Chris Summer, who uh, runs that option very, very effectively. And he made a couple of good moves of his own on uh, that 26-yard scamper. Well, he certainly knows what to do with the ball once he breaks the line of scrimmage. He's a lot like uh, Richards in a sense that he knows where the, where the golden areas are. They're always to the outside, down the sidelines. Double uh, flanker to the left. Langstaff in close and Steve's wide left as they give to the second man through. And this is Babcock. Babcock, with one of his rare carries, gets about a yard. Babcock replacing uh, Goulet at the tailback spot. And we haven't seen him until uh, right here uh, in this uh, third period, first time. I'm not sure if uh, Coach uh, Agressi just trying him out or whether uh, Goulet is, uh, is hurt. But, well, uh, word that I had from some of the coaches, Dick, was that they were going to uh, uh, not alternate these tailbacks, but Babcock was going to see plenty of action. Okay, that's evidently what they're doing, maybe giving each a half of work. Uh, both of them uh, very effective runners, and uh, Babcock probably the faster of the two as he's a good track man. Very, very quick. He gets the carry uh, on the pitch back this time. Right side, breaks the tackle, and goes to the 25-yard uh, line as he drags a couple of Rams along with him. So a good run that time by Babcock, who really didn't have an awful lot of uh, opening, but he gets to the uh, just outside the 25, third and four. Well, for Deering, the, the uh, Trojans. Yeah, uh, Deering might have made some adjustments there, which caused, which has caused the uh, uh, Thorn Academy uh, offense to run more to the outside off tackle, uh, because uh, Lavoie hasn't carried too, too much here uh, in this uh, second uh, half. Again, out of the I formation with the uh, slot left, and Goulet back in the uh, tailback spot. As uh, he relieves uh, Babcock, picks up the first down to the 20-yard line on that five-yard carry. So Dave Goulet back at, uh, uh, Doug Goulet, excuse me. Uh, Dave Goulet is in the uh, secondary uh, defensive unit. Doug Goulet, I'm not sure if they're related. We'll have to find out if they're uh, cousins or brothers or yeah. how, the, uh, how the relationship runs there. Thornton Academy is grinding it out at this point. That's their second first down. They are brothers, I understand. Thank you very much. Uh, Chucky, my boy. Chuck the Greek, my spotter down below here, says they are brothers. 
And we've got a uh, timeout on the field. They want to stop the clock as uh, an official timeout. Now play will resume as the ball is at the 20, first and 10, and that's the Ram 20. Thornton Academy here with a golden opportunity to get back into the lead. Summer with the option. Now he throws it forward. That was that was a uh, well. We'll have to see what the ruling is. They're going to have to. They'll uh, disallow that as a forward pass because he threw it as a forward pass, although it was a two-hand under under rush uh, uh, handed pass, a shuffle sort of, as he was going to pitch it. And then he decided to throw it to Lance Lavoy, and. Uh, Fortunately for the, the Golden Trojans, that's just an incomplete pass. Well, that's a big break because uh, that could have easily been a fumble. It certainly uh, would have been had he not uh, thrown it in the, in the manner in which he did. Second down and 10 as uh, Summer throwing uh, the ball incomplete. Now he goes straight drop, and he's got Steve's complete inside the five. He's into the end zone. Score. 20-yard completion from Summer to Steve's on a crossing pattern. A diagonal crossing pattern, or a post pattern, if you will. And he scores. And uh, Thornton Academy back in the lead, 12-7 to 7 on your Pete's Hardware scoreboard. All that was was a little 10-yard uh, 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 square in, I guess, slant in, slant in, yeah, yeah. slant in, and uh, and he was wide open, and Chris Summers put it right on the money. He never had to stop uh, uh, his momentum at all. Carried him right into the end zone. Beautiful pass. We'll go for the extra uh, two now. Is it going to uh, go with a stacked backfield here? Summer gives to Lavoy and then pulls it back and goes right side, and he's get in. He does. He gets in as he beats Richard to the end zone. So they fake to Lavoy up the middle and they get the two points and they're up 14 to six. That's a big two point conversion, it George. Certainly is, certainly is. And you know that uh, stacked backfield, generally when you see a stacked backfield, and that's the three backs lined uh, side by side, that's a short yardage situation, and you'd usually give it to your fullback to get that first down or that two yards. And uh, what they did was fake to Lavoy uh, on that situation. Chris Summers kept it, and he also had a pitch person right beside him in case he couldn't get in. He beat uh, a speedy uh, back to the uh, corner of the end zone, and that was Hank Richard. Richard couldn't quite keep him out of there, but uh, Summers had his uh, eyes set on that uh, marker, and boy, he just got inside and uh, got the two points. So a big two points. It's 14 now for the uh, Golden Trojans and six for the Rams as they come back up and set up for the uh, kickoff. And not to beat a dead horse, but I'm still surprised at Deering being set so far back on these kickoffs. The last kickoff uh, landed around the uh, uh, 35, I believe, and we've got people set up around the uh, nine-yard line. I said six. I'm sorry, it's seven. Uh, Thornton didn't get the point after, but Deering did. So it's 14 to seven. Oh, all right. And oh, uh, the 15. Short, short kick to the 15 to Richard. Richard is calling as he gets up over the 25 to about the 27-yard line. Wrestled down there by number 63, Paul Pickard. Nice uh, head-on tackle there by Paul Pickard as he. Uh, does the job on uh, special teams. Well, Thornton Academy has the luxury of playing uh, some of these fresh people on their uh, special teams, and they certainly want to impress the coach. And Paul Pickard was down there in a hurry. He just took on Richards and dropped him right in his tracks. 14-7, to seven, Thornton Academy regains the lead as they trail just moments ago, 7-6, after a uh, sterling run by Hank Richards off a uh, pass completion from Blackmere. A flare pass at that. First play, uh, Austin gets back to about the 25. He'll lose two yards on that uh, play, and we're going to take a break, and we'll be back with more third-period action right after this. Do you realize Old Orchard Beach has its own plaza? The Cascade Plaza, with eight stores to do your shopping. Radley's Market, the friendliest store in town. Lavertier Super Drug, Coast Country Trustworthy Hardware. Key Bank of Maine, Blue Goose Cafe, Radley's Maytag Laundry, David's Sandwich Shop, and J&D's Taxi. Remember the Cascade Plaza when it's time for your shopping. They have everything you need, and you park your car once. Visit Radley's Market, open seven days a week from 8 a.m to 10 p.m. Bradley's Market and the Cascade Plaza, the largest shopping center in Old Orchard Beach. 
An incomplete pass by Blackmere as he tried to hit Steves a little bit underthrown, and uh, it was trapped. So third and 12 as the uh, Rams are trying to get on track here after their score just uh, a few minutes ago as they trail now 14 to 7. They've taken, uh, Thorne Academy has taken Lance uh, Lavoie out uh, off defense, trying to give him a break, and uh, just like they said they would, and they also said they'd do it with uh, John Duseppe to give him a break. He's a big boy and does need a break. Yeah, they've got Jason Heald in there at one spot, and uh, we'll try to pick up the other number in just a moment. Uh, a long pass by Blackmare, knocked away nicely by Summer, right at the 50-yard line. It was intended for Steve Newcomb, the split in. So that'll bring up a fourth and long and a punting situation. With 3.02 to go here in the third quarter, your Pete's Hardware scoreboard is still reading 14-7 with Thornton Academy leading it. And with the punt coming from the Deering 26-yard uh, line, Thornton Academy should get this ball in a very good field position. They're sending three men back uh, to receive the ball, which re means they're going to try a punt return. So... Uh, We'll see how well they can set up this wall. First of all, the uh, receiver has to catch this ball on the fly. Back to receive Lambert and uh, Langstaff as Steves gets a beautiful spiral off. It lands inside the 35. Langstaff juggles it at the 22 and is hit immediately by a nice tackle by Steve Newcomb. Newcomb was all over Langstaff as he juggled the ball momentarily, but that was a beautiful spiral, and it took a Deering Ram bounce when it hit. 55 yards. 55, yard 55 yards, and uh, I'll tell you, he got most of that in the air. That was a beautiful punt by by uh, number 88 uh, of the Rams, Dennis Morris. Great well, job. That certainly helps uh, Deering out. That's a uh, heck of an offensive play when you're getting 55 yards out of something. Certainly did. Ball resting right at the 20-yard line of uh, the Golden Trojans. They work out of their eye. Give to the uh, tailback, and it's Babcock once again. Babcock in to uh, take the place of Goulet, as they've been spelling him a little bit uh, this uh, second half. He gets five yards on the first uh, play from scrimmage, and uh, it'll bring up second and five at the 25-yard line of Thornton. Well, Babcock looks like a very strong runner, and uh, uh, that's uh, Thornton Academy's uh, to their benefit to have two strong tailbacks like that. I, I believe he's their outside threat, whereas huh? Goulet is more uh, a little bit of the... Uh, bread and butter inside, inside threat, yeah. George. Uh, so they complement each other very nicely. And of course, with Lavoy, uh, you couldn't ask for much better uh, credentials. Summer looks to pass. Now he tucks it under his arm. He runs with it up over the 30. The 35 cuts across the green, gets to the 35, and is brought down right there by Austin. Chris Austin on the stop. But Summer picks up the first down on uh, a 10-yard scamper. Look to pass. Wisely chose to uh, tuck it under and run and picks up 10 yards and the first down. Well, when Chris Summers runs, he looks to score on every single play. He was zigzagging across the field. He just wouldn't want yardage. He wanted to score. Yeah, he's a gamer. He's a, a real competitor. As uh, Bill Lynn goes off uh, the Rams sideline to get a little bit of a rest, he's a two-way player and has been working very hard here. Lance Lavoie goes right side, follows his blocking, and gets to the 38-yard line. He followed uh, Glenn Arnold all the way on that one and uh, got himself three yards, second down and uh, seven. You know, when Thorn Th Th Academy runs that option, and that's what it was, the quarterback has the option of giving it to the fullback or keeping it or pitching it. So he has to read if the uh, fullback's going to be tackled or not. Out of the eye once again as they split the uh, man left and right. Summer has the room around right end and uh, gets good yardage. Enough for the first down as he's knocked out of uh, bounds near midfield, but Chris Summer using the option very effectively here in this third period. They'll move the chains as it's first and 10 at the 49 of Thornton Academy. And Chris Summer, uh, in talking with Coach Agresti, uh, George, the other day, he was telling me how he uses not only the double option, but the triple option right. and, be, and is able to read that so effectively, which is unusual for a high school uh, uh, player. Well, not... Not all that many kids can run that play effectively because you do. You have to read everything. And he says that Chris Summer is one of the few people he's coached over the years that has been able to have that talent and that ability to think that quickly. Whoops. Well, he looked for someone behind him, and uh, either that was a broken play or that was a uh, quarterback draw uh, keeper because uh, he had no one to hand off to. 
Well, I was. I'm gonna, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say that's the fullback's fault because yeah. uh, I think it was because Lance just went over and said, uh, "Chris, I'm sorry about that," or he <laughs> tapped him and uh, said, "I didn't mean to leave you alone on that." Still, <laughs> still got a yard. He sure, he sure did. He got it into uh, Ram territory at the 49. So give me a yard and a half. Second down in a long uh, nine. There was uh, 27 seconds to go here in the uh, third period. They send Langstaff off to the left side, and they flank uh, St Steves on the right. Pitch goes to uh, Babcock. Makes a nice move in the backfield, but uh, can't elude the, the five or six Rams that are waiting for him on the uh, left side as he gets back to the line of scrimmage, and uh, Steves, um, excuse me, Dennis Morris among them, uh, the many tacklers there to we uh, wait for him and greet him. Give me a yard on that uh, pickup, uh, third down and seven, and uh, that's the end of the third period. We'll take a break, and we'll be back with a score after three periods complete. That's with normal installation and built-in descrambler. They also repair all makes of satellite and TV antennas, master satellite and musical supplies on Main Street in Bitterford. As we pick up the action uh, on third and third down, uh, Lynn with a... Very, very good play. Comes in on the uh, left side and uh, throws Summer for a loss, bringing up fourth and long. Knocks the, uh, the Golden Trojans back into their own territory at the 48-yard line, four, fourth and 11. Bill Lynn has been uh, really a, a stickler uh, on uh, defense, uh, and uh, I noticed he's back in again. He wasn't out very long, George. He got a, a very, very brief breather, but uh, they missed him on defense, yeah. and that play uh, showed just why. Punning situation as uh, Eric Peterson gets a good high kickoff, goes to Austin, and Austin wisely lets it roll, but it goes down to the goal line at the one-yard line. And it's down there by the Golden Trojans. So Eric Peterson with a beautiful kick, a 50-yarder, as he puts it right on the one-yard line. And talk about being backed up to your own uh, front door. Here the uh, Rams have got to go 99 yards, and they trail in this one with a quarter to play by seven, 14-7. Well, that's certainly a break for Thornton Academy, and uh, now we'll see their uh, goal line defense, I guess, uh, short yardage defense, because uh, Deering has got to just dive it out of there, give fullbacks, give it to the tailback, and try to get two and three yards at a whack. Thornton Academy is generally very, very good in this situation. Well, Blackmere brings him out of the huddle, stack backfield, and very, very... Uh, careful or cautious handoff, if you will, from Blackmere. He wanted to make sure he placed that in the stomach of the ball carrier, and he did very nicely. They pick up good yardage as uh, ball carrier that time was uh, number 33, and that's uh, Gerber. And they're using Gerber uh, on defense, and now they've got him in as a running back. Gerber gets up over the five-yard line to the six, so five yards on that first play, and that was a good one, George, it's, for the Rams. Yeah, they had a lead blocker go up in there first, and uh, that helped their cause tremendously, but uh, they, they got another test right here. All right, they've got Austin uh, in the uh, tailback slot, and they've got uh, Gerber in the uh, fullback uh, position. He gets the call again, and he's up over the 11 to the 13-yard line, and he's got a first down. Oh, great. So I don't know where they've been hiding Gerber, but I'll tell you, on defense, uh, he's been good. But he's uh, a lot better right now in these last two plays uh, on offense. As far as getting them out of the hole, he's done that in two carries. Well, I don't know if they're using audibles because uh, Thorn Academy at the last instant before the ball is snapped is jumping people down into the gaps or head up, uh, depending on what they're calling. But Deering is running where they're not. They're running to that, that uh, hole that is not uh, being filled by a defender. Well, Richards is not in the uh, fullback spot again as they keep Gerber there and Austin in the tailback position. And uh, they've got an offside call here and uh, flags are thrown. 9.50 to go here in regulation time and we've got ourselves a ball game, 14-7. And by the looks of the clapping and everything, it's certainly gonna go against the Rams. That hurts. Yes, it does. When you get yourself out from the one yard line all the way up to the 14 or 13 yard line, as they have in two plays, then to give five yards back again on a uh, careless play like that uh, to be offside, it certainly doesn't help you any. That's the one that gives coaches gray hairs. That's the one that kills you, those little five yarders in crucial situations. Yeah, it's not so much the penalty, George. I think you hit it. It's the crucial situation that counts. It's, it's you, you know, in the inopportune time. All right, again, uh, they break uh, into the I formation. 
And it's Blackmere calling signals. As he gives to the tailback, Austin this time. And Austin's tripped up at a nice ankle tackle. And uh, he doesn't get much, maybe a yard or so. Rocco DeLuca, number 82, getting uh, that ankle uh, tackle on uh, the tailback. So second and 14 as he picks up one yard on that last carry. Second and 14, Deering at their own uh, eight-yard line. So on the academy... Uh Make it nine, excuse me, nine-yard line, George. Go ahead. Right, nine-yard line. Sound Academy now will uh, uh, defend for those little quick outs and uh, also check that fullback coming out of the uh, backfield. Double flank at the left side as uh, pitch goes to uh, Gerber. Gerber tries to skirt left end, and he doesn't get anything this time as Thornton Academy waiting there. He, he couldn't get that corner turned at all because they had about four... T.A. defenseman just waiting for him. Well, Rocco DeLuca, again, the defensive end, uh, was the one that strung that play out and caused that loss. And I could hear him up here saying, contain, contain. Right. That's his job. Sure. All right. He lost a, a yard on that carry as Gerber uh, unable to get outside. Third and 15 from the eight. That's the Ram eight. So we'll see what Bill Leroy can send in as a, uh, a miracle play here on this uh, crucial down. And this could be the ball game right now because the clock is winding down and every series very, very critical. Black made a throw, and he is sacked. He is sacked inside the five. Rocco. Wrapped up by Lance Lavoie and Rocco DeLuca. All right, and that was a big defensive play by Thornton Academy as they drop him further into, uh, now, of course, uh, Thornton Academy going to get the ball in excellent field position as they'll have to kick out of their end zone. Fourth and about 17 or 18 yards to go for the first down. And uh, punt block situation right here, Dick. One receiver back. Dennis Morris has a uh, high snap oh, out of the end zone. Safety. So right over the heads, and they didn't have to block that one as that one just sailed over the uh, kicker's, uh, Morris's head and right out of the end zone. So uh, a safety, 16 to seven on your Pete's Hardware scoreboard on that two point safety. Well, you know, uh, Thornton Academy, uh, as we say, on those situations around the goal line when they have their, their opponent pinned are very, very good. They get, uh, they get more hungrier uh, at any time during the game then they, uh, that's when they really get hungry is when they go uh, after them at the goal line. And so uh, Deering is going to have to kick off uh, at their 20, and Thorn Academy again will have very good field position. They'll probably have the punter kick the ball, and uh, he's kicking against the wind. So this turn of events for Deering uh, could be the one that, that put the knife in the... Uh, in, the, in their back, so to speak, because uh, they had some momentum going, but that punt was the key, the, that 50-yard uh, punt uh, was the key that set this whole thing That's up. right. Eric Peterson uh, nailed one right at the one-yard line and, of course, put the uh, Deering Rams in that deep hole. Now, with the safety, that means the Rams still don't have the ball. They have to kick it away. Right. They have the option of kicking or punting, and they will punt from the 20. And it's going to be uh, Dennis um, yeah, Morris. to move up the right. See, the Thornton coaches are telling their people to move up because, you know, this win factor, it really is a factor now. And this, this uh, boy is not going to punt at 50 yards in the air. No, I don't think so. Although the wind has died down substantially from the first half, there is still a lot of swirling wind down there that uh, we don't feel up here. So Morris, all set to kick it. All uh, the Rams are lined up at the 20, at the 15-yard line, and uh, he kicks it from behind. Oh, he gets a Curled sliver, Noah. and it isn't a good one at all. Taken by Jerry at the 41-yard line, so it only goes 21 yards. And again, the Thornton Academy Golden Trojans have excellent field position, and they will take over at the Daring Ram 41-yard line. A 21-yard punt by, by uh, Dennis Morris that went off the side of his foot. Well, the old kicking game, I'm telling you, it means so much to a football team. We've talked about that in the last couple of games, George. You're right, and it, it is such a big fa uh, uh, faction involved in uh, Class A football. Oh, great. On the great. option to Goulet, right side, he's got some room. Inside the 35, breaks a tackle at the 30. Another one inside the, to the 23-yard uh, line. Goulet broke two tackles on that run 
and uh, just cut back against the green beautifully, gets the first down and then some. As the ball is at the 22-yard line, give him 19 yards on that run. Well, you're never going to see a better fake in high school than Chris Summers put on the Deering High Club. He faked to Savoy, I mean Savoy, Lavoy, and dragged uh, the fake right into the line and then pulled it out. And that's what freed up uh, that pitch to the tailback. That's got to be uh, a, a Thornton Academy uh, trait because they have done that over the, the years. past several years. It's been so good, so tremendous uh, the way they fake. LaVoy right up the middle, running over people inside the 10. And he's got himself another first down. And Thornton Academy not to be denied here as they're getting uh, uh, a couple of breaks in the late going and they're taking advantage of those breaks. We have a timeout and we'll take a break at the score. Still 14 to 7 on your Pete's Hardware scoreboard. Hi, this is Freddie the Basset Hound, and boy, I love listening to football, too. But you know, when I'm not sitting on my blanket next to my radio, I'm talking about the Biddeford Aquarium. That's the best pet store around. They can take care of all your pet supplies, like food and my favorite, the toys. The Biddeford Aquarium is stacked with aquariums full of tropical and marine fish. The small animals and ferrets are a must-see, too. The Biddeford Aquarium, a half mile south of Five Points on Route 1 at Biddeford. The start of the football season means the opening of schools, and that means back-to-school specials. Maine Cleaners can help you look sharp for school and save you money by offering a back-to-school sweater special. For just $1.75 each, you can have your sweaters professionally dry cleaned and finished. That's a regular $2.75 value. So don't take chances with those expensive sweaters by just throwing them in the washer. Bring them to Maine Cleaners now and save a dollar. Main Cleaners and Coin Laundries in Bitterford, Saco, Kennebunk, and Old Orchard Beach. 6.38 remaining, 16-7 to 7 is the score. Thornton Academy leading this. I think a moments ago I said 14-7, to 7, and uh, again, I apologize. Uh, forgot that safety just uh, a minute and a half ago. A minute ago, actually. First down, and... Uh, a fumble recovery, but it looks like Thornton Academy uh, retains possession as Lavoie comes up from the bottom of that pile. May have gotten inside the 10-yard line uh, to about the 9. Second down and goal to go at the 9-and-a-half-yard uh, line. I think Greg Harris uh, uh, was a man in there causing that confusion and the uh, fumble. Stack backfield as uh, Summer calls signals, gives to uh, the middle man, and that happens to be the fullback, Lavoie. Lavoie goes right side, but again, gets only to the line of scrimmage, no more. So the Deering uh, defense really stiffening here down deep. And uh, of course, if they've got any chance at all to get back in this game, uh, time certainly is going to be a, a factor. Well, as we're down inside five uh, minutes and 45 seconds to go. Well, that, those front people are hanging very tough. Jim DeMillo, the left down tackle, was the one that brought uh, Lavoie down for no gain. He's a big boy. He goes well over 235, a senior. Eye of the eye this time, and they send Langstaff in motion. Third down to throw. Summer over the middle. It's uh, incomplete. It was uh, intended for Scott Newman, the uh, tight end, but underthrown and behind Newman. So that'll bring up a fourth down as the ball still resting at the nine and a half yard line of the Rams. 517 remaining, 16 to 7 on your Pete's hardware scoreboard. Thornton Academy leading the Rams in a great game. It's been a good defensive battle all the way. Well, they may come back with uh, a play similar to that because uh, on that play, uh, 44, Doug Goulet, nobody covered him at all. Well, he may have told uh, Summer about that, and we'll see if they decide to uh, call his number. Well, they go over the middle, wide open is Lambert, and complete from Chris Summers, and another score for the Golden Trojans. Lambert just snuck out of the left side, and nobody was there to cover him defensively. So Dana Lambert comes up with his first touchdown of the game and of, the, uh, of his varsity career, I believe, as he didn't play last year. Well, that's the difference in the new uh, Thorn Academy offensive football team, the potential to throw the ball and throw the ball for touchdowns. Chris Summers uh, rolled left, threw off his uh, right foot. That's a hard throw for anybody, but it was right on the money. The extra point try now. And they've got a new kicker, Summers to hold. The kick is up, left-footed kicker, and it's uh, 
uh, no, same one, I'm sorry, Todd Maurice. And uh, this one goes wide, and he's a little dejected. But nevertheless, the score as they come back upfield, 22 to 7. We'll be right back after these words. Now is the time. Uh, they've got momentum, they've got confidence, and it's going to be a very difficult task for Deering High to come back at this point with 5-12 left in the ball game. It'll be Lavoy to kick. He's got it teed up at the 40. Left-footed kicker gets a good one this time, and it goes right to Gerber. Gerber at the 15, the 20. Straight up the middle, the 25, the 30. The 35 and just shy of the 40-yard line as Gerber gets a good run back for the, for the ramp of the I formation. Blackmere, the quarterback, calling signals, long count. Oh, they've got a new quarterback in there. They uh, followed us up. Brian Hutchins now is taking over for... Uh, the uh, starter, Blackmere, Brian Hutchins on the first play, uh, just a straight handoff, and uh, they've got uh, their reserves coming in now as Gerber gets about uh, half a yard on the carry. And this is where we run into trouble. Yeah, we run into a, a few uh, numbers and name differentials. We'll see. They've got a few uh, strange people in there as far as numbers. Brian Latard is the tailback, and Gerber is the fullback. Uh, faked by Hutchins on the option, goes right side, gets up to about the 44-yard line but he, before he is brought down by uh, Doug Goulet. Doug Goulet uh, had some help in there by, uh, also by Jeff Jerry on the stop. So third down and uh, five as the ball now uh, around the 44-yard line, and we've got an official timeout for equipment. Well, bro and Coach Leroy going to his, uh, his bench here, conceding, of course, uh, the victory to... Uh, Dick Agresti and uh, the Golden Trojans. Hutchins to throw, he's got a man open, intercepted nicely at the 30-yard line, and that's Eric Holt. Eric Holt. Eric Holt came right in between and picked the pocket of the intended receiver. Nice job by Eric Holt with the interception. He took it right out of the hands of John Powers. John Powers had, uh, had a step maybe, but Holt with good inside position and the Golden Trojans with three minutes and 24 seconds left in regulation will take over once again on offense. Well, that was a great job by Holt because uh, except for that last leaping effort, uh, the daring man was on his way to a touchdown. And Summer now will uh, direct the attack the other way at the 30-yard line, first and 10. Handoff goes to the up man, Lavoy. Lavoy fights off three or four tacklers and gets to the 33-yard line, gets three tough yards. And now, uh, of course, Staunton Academy just run out that clock. Uh, most of the time because he's sure-handed and he's big. And he's going to gain yards. Out of the power eye, second and seven. They give now on a counter play, and it's... Uh, a good run this time by Tom Langstaff. First time he's uh, taken the ball that way. He has caught a pass or two, but uh, nice on the counter play as they bring him all the way up to the 45-yard line with a great, great move by Tom Langstaff, the uh, young sophomore who, to quote Dick Agress, he says, must go at least 130 pounds soaking wet. Well, he got right up in there. Nice 11, 12-yard gain for a first down for Thornton. 2.14 to go here in regulation, and first and 10 as... Uh, they work out of the eye once again. Summer with the handoff to Lavoy pulls it back and goes right side. Nice fake that time as he puts it right in the stomach of the fullback and then pulls it right back and fakes so well, sometimes you really have to watch closely to see who's got the ball. Well, the thing that I see about Chris Summer that I didn't see from the very first scrimmage that I saw him play this year is that when he run options, he cuts it upfield. He doesn't run around the end. When he first ran uh, in the scrimmage against Olachit, he would run option and then try to run around the end. That's not the purpose of the Ostrich, because he has a pitch man there. All right, uh, second down and eight as he picked up two on that uh, option play. They've got uh, Langstaff in the slot left. Hand off to the tailback. And this one is Babcock. Babcock, very close to first down yardage, around the 45 of the Rams as he falls forward. Uh, I think he's going to be a yard shy. But that's him a touchdown and a lot of good uh, yardage today on the ground, as well as playing both sides of the ball. Chris Summer gives to the tailback. Babcock, Babcock, goes right side, gets close to the 41-yard line, enough for the first and 10. And we're inside 40 seconds now as they move the chains probably for the last time this afternoon at Dr. Hill Stadium. 
where a very happy crowd will be filing out just momentarily. And John Giuseppe's coming off uh, with a fair amount of emotion, <laughs> enthusiasm. He's I very guess. happy over this <laughs> initial win for Thorn Academy. He and it was been. a good win for him because the ball game could have gone either way uh, at various points in the game. That's true. In the first half, it was still anyone's game. And after uh, three quarters, it was still uh, only 14 to 7, Thornton leading it. A safety and a touchdown later, uh, of course, they uh, have developed that lead. So they've run the clock down, and now finally Chris Summers says, aren't you going to uh, throw the flag and penalize us? And they did. <laughs> <laughs> he was looking just to get all he could out of the clock, and finally he did. And uh, they penalized him for delay of game for five yards, of course, and that's all he wanted was just to get as much yardage uh, or time off the clock, rather, and uh, not really worrying about yardage. Now the clock will run out as we're down to three, two, one, and that's it. So uh, Thornton Academy victorious in their home opener here, as were the Biddeford Tigers yesterday in their home opener across the way at the score, 22 for Thornton Academy, seven for the Rams. We'll be back with our post-game show and all the stats right after this. The King's Gym is the number one gym in the state. They won the team trophy in the NPC for the state of Maine. The King's Gym has over 5,000 pounds of free weight and over 40 days a week at 140 Main Street in Biddeford. For no initiation fee, the King's Gym is the way to go. All right, we're back at, uh, and if you can hear some of the applause to the uh, Golden Trojans as they're filing off after their high fives at midfield with the Deering Rams, the uh, standing applauding crowd of the... Uh, uh, Thornton Academy uh, on the Thornton Academy side uh, now uh, letting them know just how appreciative they are of their efforts this afternoon. A good game. 